Okay, what is up my peeps? I hope you are doing not bad. Hopefully this audio is okay, otherwise I'll have to do a voiceover on this video. So, today we are talking about why you should we are talking about why you should why you should start with a 200 cc bike. I'm going to show you just how capable these bikes are. Mine is a 200 cc Haojin Wari. So I'm going to convince you that it's okay to start in this uh, cc class because obviously the biggest problem is traffic. It's going to be very easy to keep up with traffic with a 200 cc. Yeah, so apparently the audio became too muffled the moment I started going very fast. So I'll just have to monologue behind the, the video. You still get to see how, how well I am able to keep up with traffic and so forth. And actually form your own opinion. These bikes will easily achieve up to 110 km per hour. Some of them even a bit faster. Like mine can do up to 125 km per hour. So traffic is not really a problem. Even other 200cc bikes that I have reviewed perform quite similar to this one. My bike in particular is actually the cheapest one in this class. I don't know why, but uh, so far it has given me no problems ever since I bought it. I've had it for like one and a half years so far. This class takes the most important box for me, which is the economy class. It's very cheap to buy, very cheap to maintain. And contrary to popular belief, they last for a good amount of time so long as you take care of them. Any bike will serve you for long so long as you're not careless and you're not too hard on it. Also, the fuel consumption is actually pretty good. It will give you about 40 kilometers per litre which should be manageable for most people. So we are doing about 80 km per hour, three matters is in front of me. Let's see which one is fast. I'm going to go with the fastest one. The biggest advantage of this bike is it's really torquey. It will be able to accelerate pretty well even at high speeds unlike some of the speed bikes. So uh, traffic isn't really a major concern. So we're doing around 90 now. Let us see how much faster they can go. <laughs> I'm redlining it every time I push it, but it's, I don't think it's doing that much damage. Especially when you are doing short distances. These bikes really love to be, to be revved. When you're doing long distances, I would definitely advise you not to do this. Most 200cc bikes brand new at under 200,000 Kenya shillings. Any that will cost you more than 200k, I wouldn't really go for it. That's my own opinion. Unless you are a mega fan or you have very deep pockets, then go for it. I believe if you have more than 200,000 Kenya shillings, then look for good second hand 250cc bikes. There are so many available in the market. There are under 200cc bikes that are severely overpriced, like our people's favorite Yamaha DT175 at more than half a million Kenya shillings and the Apache RTR 180 at 310,000 Kenya shillings we have the Apache 160 at around 290 to 300,000 Kenya shillings even the Jin Cheng 180 is around 260,000 Kenya shillings I strongly believe these things are overpriced, but if you really need to buy into them, then I would advise get them secondhand. 
there's so many of them being sold for for less i'm not sure about the jincheng but the apache and the yamaha are actually very good bikes that will last you for decades so i would that i would i wouldn't really be afraid of buying them second hand and if you want to do less than 200 cc maybe because of the fuel economy or something then i would go for the boxer 150 or the tvs 150 they're actually really good bikes and they actually move quite a bit i have been on the road with these bikes and they really move they are very fast bikes plus things like service spare parts and so forth they're actually very available they've been around for quite a while so you won't have any problems with those i've also been on the road for quite a while with two hours on the boxer 150 so i believe it's quite a capable bike if it was uh, an actual town i wouldn't even be it wouldn't even be a question because more people in most people in town are pretty reserved on the gas and like here where the distances are so long you need to actually go fast what are you doing demio are you going where am i going Back to the 200cc bikes, touring capabilities. So I've traveled with my bike from Mombasa to Nakuru three times. That is from Nakuru to Mombasa and back, Nakuru to Mombasa again and back, Nakuru to Mombasa again and back. Every time I travel from to and from the regions, I only use one day. The first time I spent 13 hours on the road doing 80 kilometers per hour. The second time, I did 12 hours at 90 km per hour throughout the entire journey, only stopping to fuel and once to eat. The third time, I took 10 hours. I did 100 to 110 km per hour, only stopping to fuel. I didn't even stop to eat. It was raining, so I really didn't want to be rained on. I thought I could beat the rain, but it caught up to me in Naivashi, so I had to stop for like 30 minutes and then proceeded. No loss in power, only pure awesomeness. So every time I talk about which bikes you should buy in and which ones that you should not, I'm only looking at the people who actually can't afford the really expensive things. I'm looking at it from an economist's perspective. People with low budget are not too much money to blow. That's why I never go for the really expensive stuff. People who keep complaining about, oh, this is perfectly priced for this specific thing, I'm only looking at it from the common Wananchi. So stay safe, ride safe, and subscribe. Yeah, this bike is especially at low speed. It has more power than almost every other bike in here.